Hello, this is Victor and in the next video I want to talk a little bit about freehand and try to motivate you to try to freehand. So freehand, as any other technique in painting, needs uh, training and needs to try and error, to do try and error. So, and there are a lot of levels of different types of freehand. So, what I want to explain here is a little bit uh, how I was evolving on freehand, how I did and why I'm doing that and encourage you to, to to try and, and to, yeah, the, we need to make mistakes as well. So I will show you some things that I'm not very proud and things that I will be more proud. So let's just start first with something very simple. And it's this shoulder pack, this chaos shoulder pack. The first things I did on freehand were the symbol of chaos. And were quite easy symbols of chaos, like the one that you see here, when it was not engraved. So normally in, yeah, here we have another example. Okay, this was the first free hands I did ever. So it was the symbol of chaos in one side, and then on the other side I was doing the symbol of the Hydra. This is another example for uh, the Alpha Legion. So this is one of my first armies ever painted, and yeah, and it was quite a um, simple free hand. So the, uh, before I was using transfer to this work and then I decide when I start doing the alpha legion to start using try to do some freehand so at the beginning was quite slow you see also the Eva is not the same for everybody and yeah and the symbol of chaos is quite an easy geometry thing then I did some very small things that the dots here on, on this backpack these are some of the first freehands and I started trying to do really a uh, like geometric simple things and that period I was also doing a um, how it's called this a um, blob bull team you see the only thing that I was uh, there to do was this type of triangles here and then I decided to take a little bit of risk and do this check um, pattern okay so at the beginning I start with very easy geometrical f um, shapes even this one the hydra, this hydra symbol is quite easy to do so you only need to do this line a little bit and then this is just a making a shape with the dot but yeah the A will do the rest but really the head of the hydra is not uh, a sophisticated shape it's almost like an arrow so if you start with easy geometrical things then you start practicing and you start to getting um, a more how to call this, more skill or uh, uh, more uh, paint brush control. The same period then, later on I went to more complex patterns, I did a try, and this was triggered because I started doing at this period Bretonian. And then on Bretonian, yeah these are, are quite old Bretonian, this is the first Bretonian I ever paint. So as you see, very flat colors, very little on highlights and yeah the this was this take me a lot of time to do that i don't know how many times i had to repeat these small stars so this was one of the first another example of the first bretonians i ever paint is this one As you see i still try to do this was more reasonable for me but look that the lines were not straight i deviate a lot so you start doing a lot of mistakes, this line is much thicker than this in the back. I keep them, as I say, and the floor, uh, the floor of the list, yeah, is more, uh, is not really a floor of the list. Okay, you see that at this moment I was not, I didn't have a lot. I also want to show this, this is a transfer. So when you want to go to complex shapes, I think a transfer, if you apply correctly, works perfectly and here is a transfer you you can see that you can almost see where the transfer starts and where the uh, or finishes but then i did just a very small freehand on the shield there the flood list this was done quite some time later you see that even the white is much better execute in this second one so just to show some examples how freehand can evolve uh, yeah after having some practice, then I encourage myself to do something like that. This is a old Grial Knight. 
Then I, I decide to do this. Ca this castle is much easier than what it looks like. First you do all the white on the castle and then you do the lines. And the lines is, are not completely straight because you see that they are not fully straight and are not on the same thickness. Doesn't matter if you keep the shape of the castle. So I even here with the falls and all these type of things. You see here I didn't close this very well. So they are, they are mis there are some mistakes. And this this for me is important because one of the first time that I try to do three dimensional shapes on this grill. I don't know if it's, you can appreciate this in camera. But here the yellow is lighter and here I go more to brown colors. So first time I try to do three dimensional shapes. So encouraged by this, after doing the grill nights, I did my first BSB and here I have to go up. Let me see if I can show you. This make on a piece of, this is a can, it's, it's, a, it's a, I think aluminium or tin plate, I don't remember. But this is from a can, a drink can, a cola can. You see, I start doing a little bit of three-dimensional on the, on the grill. Okay. And I follow the same type of, and one thing I learned is go for simple shape for uh, simple shapes for the floor the list. But even that, okay, this was some of the first trials. So you see that sometimes you have more success and other times you have your success is less. Okay, so this is one example. So really Bretonian was one of the things that boost try to force me to, to boost on on doing freehands. But at the same time, I started doing Skaven. And for Skaven, I decided to do runes. If you do runes, who cares if it's true or not? I just put some symbols there. This pattern here, that this, you have to be careful, is more difficult than what looks like sometimes. And here I try to give a little bit of three-dimensionality. If you see before, all my uh, painting was just monodimensional, and here I start doing a little bit of three-dimensionality. But there are some very easy free hands that sometimes this is quite a straightforward, the book. You don't need a lot of skills and really makes a difference on a paint job. Okay. More examples. This for me was a fail. I tried to do a banner that was looking like a dragon and it looks like a dragon paint for an 8 years old kid okay and it's not the same in both sides and really consumes me a lot of time I keep it because I like uh, the end I didn't want to rework it but this from my um, yeah is the alabardiers of my dogs of war what that happened first I didn't have a reference to paint so one lesson I learned here is always try to paint with a reference in front of you this helps a lot and we will see later on why I say that so having a reference is helping so this is the big difference when I was painting this one I had a reference I had the book of Bretonia in front of me I was copying this from the book of Bretonia when I was doing this one I mix different symbols from the Book of Bretonia to build up there. And I didn't went for difficult things, it's uh, just a grill and some symbols from Bretonia. But here I want to do something that is really difficult, maybe it was out of skill, but it was good because then I learned to have uh, how I, I learned from my mistakes. So here you have. Later on I, go, I went back to Alpha Legion. And I start working more on this type of scale patterns. Okay? When you start having brush control, these scale patterns have about three or four colors for scale. And it's very time consuming, this is why I only do partially on them. And I use them for only for the veterans. Okay? It's the, my way to distinguish the veterans from these normal marines. One pattern that is quite easy to do, and here is not well executed, but fire is one of the easiest patterns to do. Let me, okay, if you're looking for to start with doing some patterns, fire is much easier. It's one of the easiest patterns to do, okay. 
let's show you let me show you one very easy banner this banner very easy geometrical shape I just did some fire and this symbol that is why I choose this symbol for my marines because it's quite easy to reproduce and it's very easy to paint so also when I try to sometimes when I'm thinking and when you have the strategy how to paint your space marines look for things that are easy to reproduce and easy to paint if you go for a very elaborate uh, freehand uh, yeah, it will consume you a lot of time and at the end you will be pissed off the way you see all my standard marines have this symbol in one side and that symbol in one side and at the beginning I was to invent my um, space marines, my chapter this way I was doing my own symbol but then I fall in love with the dark angels and I start challenging myself a little bit more but this also, this is the my chapter master okay, this is why I decide the successive chapter of the Dark Angels and I decide to copy this thing was done having in front the symbol of Dark Angels I learned the lesson one thing that looks sometimes easy to do and is not, it's very difficult is to do these lines here so yeah, there are things that are look very difficult to do for example, doing this grill is much easier and much faster than painting these lines so sometimes and even that you see this that simulate like um, leaves this it's easier to do than making a straight line so it's important that you choose well what you want to paint and first you, uh, I recommend always to practice uh, out of the miniature more things from this chapter just to show you here is the, maybe one of the most difficult banners I ever did I think I'd improve from the dragon but still a lot of way to improve but yeah, the only way to improve and to make it easier is to repeat yourself and to challenge yourself several times. Of course, this time I only did the front, I didn't did the back. Okay? And this is the chapter banner. But, you also can do this trick. This chapter is not freehand. This, 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 these are transfers. And you cannot see if you put the transfer correctly, you will not be able to see where the transfer starts. What is the trick to do that? There are products to put the transfer, but in my case I use, first I apply gloss varnish, I apply the transfer, I apply gloss varnish, and then on top I apply and uh, matte varnish. Then you can, achieve, you can get that. So you see, Sometimes it's better to do this as a transfer. So do freehand when it's needed, when you want to challenge yourself. But sometimes when I don't want to challenge, I just do a transfer. In the same direction, this is a tank. Tanks in 40k are a best, one of the best ways to do. Uh, or one of the best, best platforms, to, platforms to do freehand this floor de lis are transfers too and I apply the same technique and you will see that you cannot see where the transfer starts and if you see that you can also paint on top of the transfer limit and you will simulate this very a lot of course then I still have to do some freehand on the program, on the patches okay but here another one, I will take the turret off. This is another one that I'm combining freehand for the eye, the Inquisition eye and the wings, and then I use the um, transfer for, for this. So, what I want to say here is here I didn't want to use transfer, 
yeah, you see that the floor of the leaves are not consistent. So it's very difficult to have this consistent and you have to be very good in painting. So sometimes you have to balance what is the best choice and what is the best technique to apply. So don't over challenge and I think if you start doing freehand I recommend you the first things, the, the easiest things to do is flames and triangles. Of course this is another one. Don't, the dragon is freehand but also this pattern. This pattern that looks quite nice it's quite easy to do and I did a tutorial just recently on this miniature. This type of freehand is not that difficult. Of course the dragon there consumed me a lot of time to paint. But what I want to say is yeah, there are a lot of ways to do freehand that looks nice and it's not as difficult as it looks like. Okay. And just other examples on vehicles. Be uh, vehicles of cows, I like to put the, the symbols on freehand. I paint them. And then just this touch of the runes here make the big difference. And these runes, you don't need to follow any shape. You just do the shapes and simulate the runes that you want. The symbols of chaos. And this was the first time I was trying that. And this that looks like glowing rooms. First you do the rune in red and then you apply a little bit of yellow, orange within. So if you find the technique sometimes it's much easier than what it looks like. Okay. But then, okay, here another one. So Bretonia the Early is an army that demands a lot on freehand unless you use transfers. Okay, I just try to avoid to repeat always the same symbols is why I went to freehand. And this, I think this is the last Bretonia I, I paint. So this... These vertical lines can be more difficult than what you think. Normally, doing straight lines in freehand is difficult. Uh, it's better to mask and... Yeah. Then we have the banner. Okay, so you can go from very complicated, this is one of the complicated ones. This can be more difficult than... If you compare this to this, if you do that, if you are not so secure or you are not so yeah, um, confident on your freehand techniques, do this pattern. It's much easier and you will find you will uh, get a very nice result. You can make the pattern thicker, like this one, with a, a double color that is explained in the tutorial, and you can have a very nice result. This is much easier than that. So choose my my. These are my my first advice. Uh, advice. Oh, the, sec the first is try it. If you don't try, you don't learn. So first of all, second, be ready to then make some very bad and to damage and to despoil some miniatures. Third, start with easy patterns, patterns that are not patterns that are very repetitive. This thing it's much easier than that. Okay, this in the the, the night. The pattern, eh? not the, the dragon. The pattern is easier than the pattern on the scaven. Why? Because here you don't have a geometrical repetition. Here you have to be repetitive and you have to have all the squares more or less in the same size. So start with things that are easier. This way when I show you the beginning, this pattern on the shoulder pad, it's easy. You only need to do triangles. It's much easier than doing the check pattern. Okay? And now I go to the army that has demanding me the highest ability in my freehand, that they are the Arlegans. Okay, this diamond pattern, I had to learn the same time I was painting Arlegans. Also this one here. So this is an army that really, if you want to enjoy, you need to have... I, 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 it's the army that was demanding me more on freehand. And I did a lot of mistakes painting this army. And this is the one that I'm more proud, that maybe the freehand that I'm more proud about. So this have, we have here all these diamond things, and then 
the face at the back. To be, I had a reference in front of me. I deviate a little bit from the reference, but I have a reference in front of me to know how to paint this. I was not able to paint this without uh, having a reference. So, you have seen here the evolution. And this, also in vehicles. This, uh, in the 40k vehicles, there is a lot of room to practice your free hand. And you can, this is, if you go for this type of patterns, this pattern, it is, it's easier than to do than the pattern on the cloth. Okay? This is easier than this. Why? Here, you don't need to be in repetitive geometrically. Here you have to be consistent. So your pattern has to be consistent. You have to uh, you have to adapt the pattern to the shape of, of the clothes. So if you don't do that, it will not look great. This pattern, the advantage it has is if you do one diamond bigger than the other, it's good, it's looking good. You only need to do diamonds, more or less keep the shape. Some can be a little bit deviated to the right, some can be a little bit deviated to the left. It will look like good so yeah just some tricks just some feedback and and some yes give you some some tips about freehand doing freehand so as i say start practicing start with easy shapes start with things like that although this is my last freehand I start with something like that I start with something like that Okay, start with the fire. Let me see if I find start with this type of things. Doing these patterns and making them a little bit more complicated each time will help you in gaining brush control. Once you start having, uh, having brush control, then you can start challenging yourself. Don't start doing geometrically, start doing things like that. A little bit more complex, but not extremely complicated. Even this guy is not that complicated. When you start having more confidence, then try to do repetitive patterns than this one. And then you can start also checking to do this type of random patterns, like this one. Okay? And then, once you start having more confidence and rush control, and you are pretty confident that you, you can control, I recommend you to start trying to do banners, more complicated, more elaborated banners. You can start first doing very easy banners when you don't have this much control. You don't need to put the eagle in the middle, so you, this, just this banner without any symbols will be good. But then when you start having more rush control, you can start doing more complex patterns. Trying to do even more complicated things. Okay. And when you are really comfortable doing freehand, then you can start doing more crazy things. So as all the techniques, we need to practice you need to make mistakes. You have seen that I uh, not all my freehand was always perfect. Uh, and as all the other techniques you also have seen in these miniatures, my highlights were not good at the beginning. So we have to learn on all on all the things. So we are learning on how to do shades, highlights, brush control. Uh, yeah, just freehand is another part of the hobby. So I hope this encouraged you to try and to do some freehand. I hope you find this interesting. Uh, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye.